Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the board game Brass Birmingham. It's not the most complicated game, but it does have a few small rules that you must know to play the game. But luckily the game board has some information on it to help you remember those rules. So let's get to it. I'll explain how to play this for the very first time. At the end of this video I'll quickly let you know how it goes when you really play it. You are going to play until there are no more cards to use. Every time you do an action you must discard a card. At the end of your turn you take cards from this deck to replenish your hand. At some point this deck will run out of cards then everyone has to use the cards they have left in their hand and when those run out the game is over. And then you score points. Whoever has the most wins the game. You don't get any points during the game only when everyone has run out of cards. And what you get points for is quite easy to explain. You score for tiles and boats. You get points for all the tiles in your own color that have been placed on the towns on the board and flipped over. Because when you flip them over you can see the points. Here this number in black. Count up all the points for your own tiles. I'm playing with yellow so all my tiles are yellow. This tile isn't flipped over so that won't give me points. You can't see any points anyway, they're written on the other side. So that's already one thing you get points for. And the other thing you get points for is all your tokens that you have placed in between the towns, the boats. Here's a yellow one of mine. This is how you score for them. If you have one of your tiles on a town that's been flipped over, that already gives you points, but it might also have this link icon in the top right. Sometimes it's one, and then you score one point for each boat you have right next to that town. If your tile shows two link icons, then each of your boats next to that town scores two points. Just move up with your own point token on the scoring track. Alright, moving on. You play the game in rounds. Each round is three steps. Step 1. Every player gets one turn to do two actions. Step 2. Determine the player order for the next round. Step 3. Get money. Let me go through that again in a bit more detail. Step 1. Going by the player order here, every person gets one turn. During your turn you must do two actions. I'll explain in a moment what actions you can choose from. But any time you spend money during your turn, instead of putting that money in the bank, you put it on top of your own player token. Step 2. As soon as every player has had a turn, you look here to determine the player order for the next round. Whoever put the least money on their player figure will be the first player. Whoever spent the most money will be the last player. And of course you also do this for the players who were in between that. Anyway, once you've made the new player order, then you can put all the money back into the supply. Step 3. You end each round with getting money. Each player looks at where their own money marker is on this track. And that's how much money you get. In case you're in the minus, then you have to pay money to the bank. 
So, that's a round. Take turns, change the turn order, and then get money. Now, what do you do when it's your turn? When it's your turn, you have to do two actions. And every time you do an action, you have to take one of the cards in your hand and put it on your discard pile. There is only one action where it actually matters what's on the card. That's the build action. But for all the other actions, it really doesn't matter what's on the card. The only important thing is that you have to discard a card every time you do an action. What are the actions? What can you choose from to do when it's your turn? You can look at your own little information card for help. The first thing you could do when it's your turn is pass. Just do nothing. But even for that, you have to discard one card. When it's your turn, you can also choose to take a loan. In that case, you take 30 money from the bank. And then you move your own money marker down three spaces on this track around the board. Don't be afraid to take loans. It's a lot of money for a small price. Another thing you can do when it's your turn is discard two extra cards from your hand and then take one card from here and one card from here. These two are wild cards. Whenever you use one of these, you put them back here instead of on your discard pile. So, first you discard one card for simply doing an action, and then you discard another two cards to take two cards, one of each. As long as you have at least one wild card in your hand, you're not allowed to do this action. When it's your turn, you can choose to place one of your boats on the board. If you look at the game board here, you can see this action costs three money. For three money, you can place your boat on the board. And remember, you put that money that you pay on your own player figure. Anyway, if you have absolutely nothing on the board, then you can place this boat on any canal you like, the small blue water lines you see on the board. In case you do have something on the board, then you have to place the boat where it connects. If you have a tile on the board, then you have to place it next to the tile. If you have a boat on the board, you can also place the boat on a canal on the other side. Like this, for example, I already had this boat here, so I could put a boat here. So, those are already four actions you can choose from. Pass, take a loan, discard two cards to get two wild cards, or pay three money to place a boat on a canal. There's more. Also keep in mind that during your turn you are allowed to do the same action twice. Anyway, another action you can choose to do is develop. As one action, you can remove up to two tiles from your own player board. For each tile you remove, you have to remove one orange cube from the game board. An orange cube is iron. You can either take an orange cube you like that's anywhere on one of the towns. It doesn't matter if it's on your tile or another player's tile. You don't even have to be connected to it in any way. Just take it and put it back into the supply. If there is no orange cube here, then you can remove one from the market on the right side here, but you have to pay money for each cube. The price is written next to it. 
put the money on your own figure and remove the cube from the market. Don't forget that you can remove up to two tiles in one action. You take the tile with the lowest value of whatever category you choose and they can go back in the box. But why would you do that? When you place one of these tiles on the board as a build action, I'll explain that later, then you also have to take the tile with the lowest value. But those will give you less points. So, if you want more points at the end of the game, you have the option to remove cheaper tiles. That's what the develop action is removing up to two tiles for iron. The only tiles that you aren't allowed to remove are the ones that have this little tiny light bulb on it with a red line through it, like this one. The only way to get those off your player board is to build them. Two more to go and then we're done. The build action. When it's your turn, you can build. That means placing one of your tiles on a city. But there are some rules connected to that. First, like I already said, this is the only action where it actually matters which card you discard to do this action. For all the other actions, it doesn't matter at all what's on the card. That's only for the build action. If you discard a card that has a city on it, then you can build something in that city. You don't need to be connected by anything. But you can only build something there that has the same icon as what's already on the board. For example, if I discard the card with Birmingham, then I can build in Birmingham but I can only build something that it shows in Birmingham. The next thing you do is pay the price. As I've said, you have to pick the tile with the lowest value of whatever it is you want to build. The price for each tile is written right next to it. It can be money, or a cube, or both. If you pay money, then it goes on your player figure. If you have to pay iron an orange cube, then you can take it from anywhere, like I explained before. If it's a black cube, that means coal, then things work a little differently. You can look at the board for help, uh, here at the bottom right. For the orange cube, it shows nothing, that's because it's free. For the coal, it does show something. And that's because if you want to take some coal from the board to pay for the tile you want to place, you have to be either connected to a tile that has coal or you have to be connected to the market. If you are connected to coal on the board somewhere, you take one cube from the nearest tile and put it back into the supply. It doesn't matter if it's yours or from another player. If you're connected, you can take it. If you're not, then the only other way to get coal is to be connected to the market. The market shows this icon of two arrows, and you find that same icon on some spaces of the board, like here and here. If you're connected to those spaces, then you can pay money to get a cube from here. There's more. So, chosen a location to build your tile, you've chosen a tile, and you've paid the price. Now you place the tile. If you can choose between a space that shows only exactly the type of building that you are placing, and another place that shows several options for buildings, then you have to place it on the one that shows only the single type of building. For example, here you can see this one option. 
add this other tile that has multiple options. If you want to place a tile with this on it, then it has to go here instead of here. Okay, if you chose a tile from this top section or the middle section, then nothing happens. Just place the tile with the side up that doesn't show points. So a wooden crate, this brick building or this pot. If you place one of those, nothing happens. If you place one of these bottom tiles, then something does happen. This one with the beer barrels, the minecart with the coal, or the iron refinery. If you place one of these, then you have to put stuff on it. The tile itself will tell you exactly how much you put on it. If you built a brewery, these beer barrels, then just place as many barrels on them as the tile says. This one says just one. So you can put one barrel on it. If you build a coal mine, then you put coal on it. If you put an iron refinery on the board, then you put iron on it. Again, the tile will show you how many. After you've placed the cubes, look at the market. Are there any open spaces there? If so, you have to fill up the empty spaces with the cubes that you just put on your own tile. You get as much money for it as the board tells you. The money is written right next to it. When you buy from here, you have to pay. When you place cubes here, you get money. And that's it. That's how you build, how you place one of your tiles on the board. Of course, all the beer barrels and the coal and the iron is now available to you, but also to other players. As soon as the last resource has been taken from the tile, you can flip it over. And then you get points for it at the end of the game, and you can move your money marker up on the track. Just look at the arrow on the tile and the number. And you can only have one of your tiles in each city. Also, I did this build action by using this card for Birmingham. You have all these cards with locations on them that you can use to build in those specific cities. But you also have these other cards. They don't show a city, but they do have a type of building on them. For example, this one shows beer barrels to build a brewery. One of those tiles where you put barrels on it after placing it. I can also use this card to do a build action. Then I can choose where I want to build my new brewery, but I do have to be connected to it. That's a very important rule. With the city card, you can build in a city even if you're not connected to it. With these other cards, you do have to be connected to it. And for the rest, it works exactly the same. And now I've also explained how you get points at the end of the game. Your own tiles get flipped over when whatever resource was on top of them has been taken away then you will get the points that are written on them. But that's what you do for the beer, the coal and the iron. But what about those other types of tiles, the ones where nothing happens when you place them on the board? Well, that's what this very last action is for. The sell action. If you do a sell action, then you can flip over as many tiles as you like of a crate, a brick, factory or a pot in one action. And there are rules for that. If you want to flip over one of these tiles, they have to be connected to a space that has these tiles on it. The ones that are straight on one side 
and round on the other side. And not only that, they have to show exactly the same icon as the tile that you want to sell. The tile that you want to flip over has to be connected to this tile. And if the tile that you want to flip over shows a little beer barrel on it, that means you also have to remove a barrel of beer from the board. If there happens to be a barrel near uh, this, oth this other round tile, then you can take that one. It will even give you a little extra bonus. The rulebook can easily explain that for you. If there is no beer barrel, then you have to take one from the board. If you have a brewery somewhere, then you can take a barrel from that tile, even if you're not connected to it. If it's your beer, you can always take it. If it's not your brewery, then you can only take a barrel if you're connected to that other player's brewery. You can look at the bottom left of the game board again for some help. Some beer can be taken if you're connected. Your beer is always available to take. We're done. It's a lot of information. And as I said, there are many small rules you'll need to remember. I could repeat them all, but it's best to just play the game and keep the rules close. Look at your information sheet and the game board for little reminders. As I've said, this is how you play the game when you're trying it for the first time. When you play it again, let me quickly tell you how that goes. You are only halfway through the game. The cards are all gone, you've taken your points, but now put all the cards back, shuffle the deck, deal out eight new cards and go again. When you really play the game, it's two phases. The rule book or the information card will tell you how to get everything ready quickly for the second half of the game. But it will be more exciting and complicated. All the boats are removed and from now on, you are allowed to build more than one of your tiles in each city. To connect yourself to everything, you're going to have to build railroads. But you'll figure that out easily when you understand how you play the game. Brass Birmingham. Give it a go with the rules close by, and I do hope you'll enjoy it. Thank you for watching, feel free to leave a comment, and see you for the next one.